Hey guys, it's Andy. Good to be with you again today. Now, a few days ago when we were talking uh, at the beginning of Mark chapter 2, we talked about the idea that Jesus, uh, when he claimed to be the Son of Man, he was claiming to be the Messiah. He was claiming to possess authority. Now, in our passage today, we see that once again, Jesus claims to be the Son of Man. He claims to have authority over the Sabbath. But since we've already talked about what it meant for Jesus to claim to be the Son of Man, what I want to focus on in today's passage is what it means to have a Sabbath in your life and, and, and what that looks like. Because here's the thing. Yesterday, we talked about the idea of a spiritual practice. And the idea of spiritual practices, whether it's fasting or in this case, keeping the Sabbath, isn't to get really good at, at the particular practice. It's to use the practice as a means that draws us closer to God. Well, I think we're going to see that in, in this passage today when we talk about what it means to have the Sabbath. Now, growing up, I always wondered what it meant to honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. In Exodus chapter 20, when Moses was given the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath was part of commandment number four, honoring the Sabbath and keeping it holy. But I didn't really understand what this was all about. I just knew that as a little boy, when we got home from church, my dad would tell me and my little brother, Mike, that everyone in the family was going to take a nap because Sunday was a day of rest. Now, at the time, I didn't like hearing that Sunday was a day of rest. But I must confess, it is something I now tell my own children. I think my dad was on to something. Sunday is a good day for rest. Now, <laughs> I can laugh about that. But for the Pharisees, the Sabbath was no laughing matter. For them, the Sabbath was a day where absolutely no work could be done. Now, I want to be clear about this. This wasn't a matter of once a week the Pharisees just wanted to relax and really get away from their work. No, for them, to rest on the Sabbath was an incredible, incredibly important ritual, and it was actually part of being a faithful Jew. You see, because God had proclaimed in the Ten Commandments that the Sabbath was to be a day of rest, the Pharisees felt like they absolutely had to be devoted to this idea. In fact, they were so devoted to keeping the Sabbath as a day of rest that they had literally hundreds of rules and guidelines so that they could define what counted as work and what didn't. And there was a lot of debate about this. Let me give you one example. A commentator that I came across wrote that the Pharisees believed that if a wall fell on top of someone on the Sabbath, only enough rubble could be removed to find out how badly the person had been injured. If the person was not injured too badly, then they should just be left under the rubble until the Sabbath ended. Then the rescue could be completed. Now, I share this not to make fun of them, but to give you an example of how zealous the Pharisees were for maintaining the Sabbath. Now, the religious leaders like the Pharisees assume that Jesus would have just as much passion for maintaining the Sabbath as they did. But our passage today illustrates that Jesus had a different attitude towards the purpose of the Sabbath. I think that for Jesus, the purpose of the Sabbath was to think about God and enjoy the good gifts that God gives us. Because that's what the Sabbath is. It is a gift from God. God is saying that in the midst of everything that's going on in our world, we can trust him to take care of our lives, even if we dev don't devote every single day to working to take care of ourselves. As it says in the Westminster Shorter Catechism, the chief end of man is to love God and enjoy him forever. God wants us to enjoy him, and the Sabbath is the kind of spiritual practice that once a week we engage in that is supposed to grow our sense of joy in the Lord. In this sense, the Sabbath as a day of rest sort of reminds me of those paper chains that children often make before Christmas or the end of school or counting down towards vacation or something like that. In my family, my children will make these sorts of paper chains when we are counting down the days to someone in our family coming to visit, uh, someone that we love. We are looking forward to them being with us. Now, we don't make the paper chains because we think it will make the person who's coming to see us happy. We make them because it makes us happy, and it builds a sense of anticipation that we're going to get to spend time with people that we love. Now, it would be weird if once the people we love arrived at our home— that if we would spend more time with the chains instead of spending time with them. Because in a sense, the paper chains have no real value. The only reason that they matter are because they remind us of who is coming. In a way, that's what spiritual habits and spiritual practices do for us. I mean, And the Sabbath is an example of these kinds of spiritual practices. In itself, it has no value, but that doesn't mean it's not important. It is important because it is a weekly reminder of how much God loves us and how much he wants us to enjoy him. Now, we don't want to become legalistic about it, but at the same time, we would be foolish to miss out on this gift from God. 
At the time of creation, God worked for six days and then he rested. And he thought that pattern was such a good idea that he extended it to you and me. Let's, let's take advantage of it and make sure that we're taking time each week to enjoy God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you thought the idea of a day of rest and a day to enjoy you and enjoy your creation was a good idea. Lord, I pray that in the midst of our busyness, that we would be able to take the time to actually have a Sabbath, to spend time with you and to enjoy you and your creation. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow.